here she comes, the highway woman. She comes with music for your soul, and then moves along. Bridget London, and if you're just joining us, this is the Highway Woman radio show. I am so thrilled to have with me on the phone right now uh, my special guest, Miss Holly Williams. We're going to be featuring cuts from her amazing new album, which is called The Highway, and talking to her about this album and her music. So, hey, Holly, how are you? Hi. I'm great. I'm about to sit down to fried chicken in Austin, Texas. So I'm doing good. <laughs> well, welcome to Texas. <laughs> We're happy Thank to have you. you here. So you've got some shows here in Texas. Uh, you're playing at uh, Stubbs and Sam's Burger Joint and a few other places, yep. right? Yep. Uh, Dallas and uh, Winnie and Austin, San Antonio. Yeah, it's been. I haven't been down here in a couple of years. You know, since the last record, maybe in three years. So. I'm I'm thrilled to be back and playing all these new songs and, and getting a lot of, you know, hopefully meeting a lot of fans and everything. That's great. Now, when you perform, your new album is, and, and I, I love it this way, is a, a little bit more stripped down than your your prior release. And when you perform, like, are you acoustic or do you have a, a, a big band with you? So, well, tonight will be a, all of Texas is three pieces. It's myself and my husband both playing guitar and and I've got my keyboard out, and um, we have a it's kind of an upright electric bass. It's a cool instrument. So we've got some uh, tempo, three-part kind of bluegrass harmony songs, and then I do a part in the set where it's just me and my guitar and, and myself and my piano. So it's definitely, you know, it's a songwriter, singer-songwriter show with a uh, good moment. It's not like a, you know, totally quiet listening show the whole time or anything. But, yeah, it's definitely all about the lyric and the song. Wonderful. Well, let's talk about those songs. First of all, uh, the title track, I love this track, and, and uh, I would like to feature it. you want to talk a little bit about it before we play it? Yeah, for sure. You know, it was the uh, last song I wrote for the record. The record was actually completely finished, and I kept telling my producer, I said, there's something I have to say. I don't know what it is, but I just feel like I haven't covered some kind of subject. And literally, I was at the gas station one night, and the chorus just fell out of the sky, and I started singing the song and ran home and wrote it. I think it just kind of sums up where I was emotionally with this record and just trying to get back out here on the road and... And, and playing music for people, you know, I feel like you can get so separated as a musician. It's all about radio chart positions and stuff. But for me, it's all about the fans and building a, a long-term fan base and, and, you know, being out on the highway. So, so I love Song to the Road. Well, here is Holly Williams, the title track to her new album, folks. Go get it. It's called The Highway. Missing their smiles, missing those miles I've been missing home. Out there on the highway. Out there on the open road Ooh, baby, will you roll with me, roll with me Head down to New Orleans I should be wearing out the black top Out there with the boys I love Everybody, will you roll with me, roll with me Running down the streets And that was The Highway by my wonderful special guest, on the radio show, Highway Woman Radio Show, actually, called The Highway. <laughs> and uh, so thrilled to be talking with Holly about this record. I can't say enough about it, folks. Um, I, I want to play the song that first got my attention for this album was the first single. Actually, you had a, a noise trade um, acoustic uh, thing that yeah. was released, and that's how I found Drinking, the song. And oh, I, I love oh, that I version, too, but I, I started playing that on my radio show immediately. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I love that. I love the I love noise trade because it can just introduce. Well, it did its job, you know, introducing new people to the music and you know, 
Yeah. So tell me now with this song, you you did just you and the guitar, but then you made this great video for it. And the song, uh, what was the inspiration behind this one? Obviously a true story or? <laughs> you know, I mean, it not something that happened to me, but I just started, this sounds kind of crazy. I'm a huge fan of Bridges in Madison County. And I, I really think that somehow that movie inspired it because I'd watched it a few nights before and I just sat down one morning. I had this line from year, probably 10 years ago, um, why are you drinking like the night is young? I and mean, I've had that line for years and I just started singing it out. And, you know, I think it's, it, it's sometimes the true story of some hopeless situations in small town America, you know, on the, on the road and the highway, you get to see a lot of stuff out here and, and meet a lot of people. So it's definitely, you know, kind of a, a downer lyric, but it's such a, a, a fun song to play live. And I love the harmonies on it. And I just, I, I love singing that. I'm, I'm thankful God gave me that song. <laughs> it's a great song. Let's play it for everyone. Thank you. Here is Drinkin' from Holly Williams. Well, why are you leaving like we don't exist? Yeah, hey, why are you leaving like we don't exist? Packing your bags and I clinch my fist. So why are you leaving like we don't exist? And that was one of my favorite songs of the year, probably my favorite song of the year, Drinking by Holly Williams. If that isn't a real country song, uh, I don't know what is. <laughs> in so Thank many you. ways, in so many, for so many, in so many reasons. But the uh, inflections in your voice and the lyrics, the, the whole bit, and um, you know, um, they trotter. They're a great music blog. They wrote this amazing like essay on the whole story of the song, almost like a little miniature film. And I was thinking. Man, I thought about stuff on every people's reactions, and <laughs> and who makes what of what, you know? <laughs> that, that's great. Hey, now that's when you know you're putting out great art, Holly. <laughs> well, thank you. That's right. Sometimes when stuff comes from, I don't want to say like the easiest place, but just that flows out of you, and in the simplest ways can have the biggest impact. You know? Totally. Those are the songs to me that I always am closest to. The ones that just. The 10 minute song, you know, Hank Williams Sr. used to always say, if a song can't be written in 10, 10 minutes, it ain't worth writing. And, you know, not that I'm 100% agree, there's plenty of songs that take longer that are great, but it's true. It's that song literally poured out in three or four minutes and the whole thing came, and now it's my most comfortable song to play live. I love playing it live, and, you know, so it just came out of nowhere. You know, and, and speaking of Hank Sr., for those listening who don't know, that would be your grandfather. You know, yeah. it's it's got to be, I can't even imagine what it's like. I have a lot of friends who uh, have are in the same situation you are with, you know, have famous artists as fathers and relatives and such. And everyone has kind of the same but a different part of that story. You know, for you, did you, did you ever rebel against country music or was it just so much a part of you that you had to do it? You know, I really didn't. I mean, I, I still don't know what, what my music is. People have called me everything from jazz to folk rock right. to, you know, so I'm definitely not in the Nashville mainstream right now, the walls of radio. But, you know, it's like Hank's another favorite quote. Hank Williams said, um, I don't know what you mean by country. I just make music. Yeah. I know how. And that's kind of me. It's like, you know, I'm so great that CMT is supporting it. Um, I've always just written songs. And if some of them end up more country, like drinking, some of them end up more piano ballad, like without you. Then I just kind of follow where my heart leads for the song, and and hope that you know people can still find it because it's hard when you're kind of in the middle of genres. You know, I'm I'm right. I'm a uh, I just I'm a songwriter, not really kind of one way. So I, I never really rebelled. I just kind of tried to write from the heart and and put what came out. You know, right. You know, and I think I think it's great that CMT is playing it because you know, in my opinion, they don't play hardly anything that's integral and to know that they're actually playing this is is good news and but I mean like you were saying the whole album I mean this appeals to everyone fans of people who would like anything from rock and roll to folk to Americana I mean obviously a softer side of rock but yet I mean yeah it's kind of the same with touring you know because I'm touring with everyone from John Prine to Little Big Town to Sheryl Crow and then my own show so it kind of hopefully it's blending for everyone something for everyone right and I think that's great you know that's a sign when you can when you can reach different people and genres are so hard anyway I mean they're almost impossible nowadays unless you're you know strictly trying to do something for commercial satisfaction and and 
this album covers such a good range. I one of my other favorite tracks um, on the record. It's hard because I obviously I mean, you're going to hear me raving about it because I I really <laughs> really love this record. Um, is thank a good you. man. That's oh, love you. that song, and uh, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about it, and we could play it. What do you think? Well, thank you. I um I wrote that one, um, you know, just really a, a love song to my husband. I was in a bad car wreck in 2007, and after that wreck. I just suddenly got really paranoid, honestly, of people dropping around me and, and losing people. And when I got married, it was really hard for me to just deal with that, that uh, you know, the reality of, of we're all going to die someday reality. So it's kind of a bittersweet love song. It's, you know, God forbid that should ever happen. And, and um, you know, I, I'm, I've got a good man. So it's it's kind of a, a, a really sad song, but also just showing, you know, my love for him and, and kind of what we've been through. Wow, let's play that. It's a really, it's a great song. A Good Man by Holly Williams, folks. The new album is called The Highway, and don't go away because we'll be uh, back with more with Holly after this. Oh, your tender heart Taught me the hardest part That I could never learn And everything Promises I love you If you ever slip out of my head I could say I loved a good man And that was A Good Man from the album The Highway. Holly Williams is in Texas right now doing some shows. We're so happy she's here. We hope she comes back again uh, very soon. And... Uh, Really excited about this new album she's just released. She's getting all kinds of uh, great praises critically from it and from her peers as well. And speaking of peers, you have several uh, artists who have joined you on this record, including your husband. You just were talking about that on the last track. Tell me a little bit about the making of this album and how you decided to bring in different people to work with you on it. Well, it definitely was not planned for that. It was just going to be, you know, me going in doing another album and, and with my songs. And it all came naturally. I think the first person who came up was actually Gwyneth Paltrow. I've, I've known her for a few years. She's a friend of mine. And she has an incredible, incredible harmony voice, almost like a bluegrass voice. And I just said, hey, do you want to come sing on this? And, you know, here's a song. And she loved Waiting on Jean. So, you know, she came on board. And then Jackson Brown was a wild card. My producer kept saying, who's your dream artist? I said, Jackson Brown. I love him. He's <laughs> just my favorite writer. So he came to studio. I was totally freaking out and so excited. I bet. It was awesome. <laughs> I've known Dirk Stanley for a while, and I just love his kind of really unique, gravelly kind of, you know, country voice. And he, he did it. And then, you know, Jacob Dylan did one. We've, we've done shows together in the past. And so it was really funny. It was like, we were going to have one, then two, then three. And then I was like, I want this to be a duet record. But you know, it's not as prominent unless you read it and know about it. It's not like their voice is, like, right up front, you know. So I wanted, I wanted it to be a discovery. It's like, oh, who's that cool? That What's that voice in the background, you know? But it was great. I mean, the support on this record from artists has just been absolutely amazing. And I'm just happy that they, you know, lent their time. And hopefully Jackson didn't think I was too much of a nerd, but I got his autograph and took pictures. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's the best part of the of being in the music business is getting to meet people that you admire and respect so much and work with them on top of it. How yeah. cool is that? And I'm sure he loved your stuff. And, you know, with, with touring with this album and such, other than Texas, what? let's tell folks, you know, because we've got listeners all over. Uh, tell us, you know, what, what are your plans for this year? Obviously pushing this album, I would think, right? I mean, pretty hard. Yeah, I'm literally touring all over the place. Last week was Chicago, Green Bay, Indiana, Boston. Uh, this week is Texas. So if you go to hollywilliams.com, there's a ton of tour dates on there. I am going to head over to the UK the end of June for some dates with Ron Sexsmith, another amazing songwriter. But I'm just, I'm all over north, south, east, and west. Let's see, May mostly is California, Colorado. I'm doing some, um, a whole tour with John Hyatt this summer and, and I'm all over. So, so there's a lot of tour dates online or on my Facebook page. And, um, tweet about my two experiences right now at Lucy Fried Chicken. I'll be tweeting about that. So plenty of ways to keep up with me. You know, all my experiences on the road and everything. Well, it's kind of hard to keep up with everything when you're on the road, I'm sure, you know. 
Yeah, um, you know, it's my first time on an independent label, so that's a whole other world, my own merch and distribution, and, and you know, so it's kind of, it's a, it's a full-time job, but, but I'm loving it. And I love that, and I love that this record was on the independent. That It's so great. It's feel good to, even though it's so much more work, obviously, feels good, though, to yeah. be in charge of your own your own situations, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, I can't risk radio saying, uh, she, we don't like her, she doesn't trip in our boundaries, so we're going to drop her. You know, it's just nice that to, to go out there. I mean, yeah, you're you're busting your ass, driving around in a suburban, you know, city to city to tour manager, but that's how you, that's how I, I got to build it in the long run, you know? Absolutely. Do you find that you can, are you doing a lot of writing? Can you write when you're on the road? Right now, no. I mean, the, the schedule is so crazy. So we wake up and drive to the next city and sound check and interviews. And but um, you know, hopefully in the fall we're going to do a little bit less of, of a grueling where I'll have a few more days off. And yes, when I when I do have a day off and I'm in a hotel room, it's the best place for me to write because you know in Nashville I have a clothing store. I've got two dogs and husband and house to take care of. And so being in hotel rooms alone is definitely what I need more of. <laughs> Who do you listen to that really right. inspires you, that makes you feel like, oh, my God, i got to go write a song now? Who are some of the artists that you, you know, that you draw from? Uh, you know, I've always been drawn to just the singer-songwriters, starting with, you know, Tom Waits, Patty Griffin, Jackson Brown, Lucinda Williams, Neil Young, you know, Bob Dylan, all the classics, and then up and even into the modern. I mean, I'm obsessed with Radiohead and Coldplay. I also adore... Jay-Z that doesn't really make me want to write a song. But I really, you know, it's never it's never been about genre for me. It's been about quality. So there's quality in country, there's quality in rock, there's quality in, in you know, certain jazz artists. But, you know, things that make me want to sit down and write a song, probably Gillian Welch and Dave Rawlings, you know, just make me want to go straight to the guitar, Steve Earle, all that kind of stuff. Well, let's, uh, let's feature one more track, and I'm so glad that you had time to talk with us today. And uh, of course, I I love uh, I love this song too. Of course, you know I'm saying that about all of them. <laughs> uh, waiting on uh, June. Now this is about your grandmother, right? Can you talk a little bit about this song, Ollie? Yeah, for sure. I lost both of my grandparents on my mom's side in between the last album and the new one, and wow. they just left the mark on me. We had a they had a really simple life, small town small town life out on the farm, cotton picking in Louisiana. They just meant the world to me, and and this song kind of came out of the nowhere one day, and I sat down and wrote it in about 20 minutes, and, and it's definitely the one at the merch table every night where the grown men come up crying. I mean, even for me, it's hard to get through because it starts when they're eight years old, and, and, and they're in the cotton fields up to through their life and kids and farm and nursing home in heaven, so it really is kind of a full story. It definitely means the world to me. We're going to do a video. I'm working really hard on it right now, getting all kind of footage of them as children and the babies, and it's going to be like a, a real-life documentary video, you know, even though they're gone now, so... I, I love this one. This one means so much to me, and um, and it just my heart is is wrapped around it. And I hope everyone else loves it too. I think too, what really gets people. I mean, you know, it's such a vivid story, but also that a love could be could last that long too. You know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were together for fifty six years, and you know, just had such a an, an ongoing love and respect and commitment. You know, which we don't see as much these days. So it was just uh, you know really inspiring to 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 be a part of their family. Well, this is Waiting on June from Holly Williams, folks, from her new album, The Highway. Joe and Becky and Donovan Shelby. Our tiny house was a sanctuary. Laughed to fill those rooms all day long. And yeah, we were waiting on June. She's putting on her makeup and waiting on June. She's trying to get her hair curled and waiting on Kids, listen to me. You walk on down to Sunday school, I'll be there in 15, waiting on you. And that was Waiting on June. Uh, go get the highway, folks, by our guest, Holly Williams. Holly, I thank you so much for uh, being on the show. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you so much. And that's hollywilliams.com. And uh, she's got all kinds of great stuff on there. And download the highway, right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Bridget London, and this has been the Highway Woman Radio Show. Now they're 
where she goes, the highway woman, and she's from you. Oh.